stories tonight in Y News. New COVID-19 infections nationwide shoot up to over 10,000, nearly double from yesterday's case count of over 5,000. Pharmaceutical group assures enough medicine supply for flu-like symptoms amid high demand. The national government mulls over National Vaccination Day for senior citizens. And Hong Kong has banned flights from the Philippines and seven other countries amid the growing number of Omicron cases. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, January 5, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am Mariel Latoza. First in the news, the Philippines recorded 10,775 new cases of novel coronavirus disease or COVID-19 pushing the nationwide case count to 2,871,745. The last time that the Philippines recorded a five-digit additional infections was on October 10, 2021, with 12,159 cases then. Of the total cases, the Department of Health said 39,974 or one. 1.4% are active, the highest since the 2nd of November. Most of the active cases, or 33,866, have mild symptoms. 2,983 were in moderate condition. 1,512 were severe. 319 were critical and 1,294 were asymptomatic. The death toll also now reached to 51,662 with 58 new fatalities. Meanwhile, the recovery tally jumped by 605 to 2,780,109. Amid the rising number of cases and concerns about the different variants of coronavirus, the DOH once again reminded the public to get vaccinated and follow the public health standards. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has topped 2,900,000. 2, 295 million, rather, 235,203, while the deaths have surged to 5,457,538, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The United States is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 57,048,989 and 830,071, respectively, according to the CSSE followed by India and Brazil. Okta Research has been monitoring countries that experience resurgence of COVID-19 cases due to Omicron variant. According to the independent monitoring group, the Omicron surge will not last long even in the Philippines. Aiko Miguel explains why. Based on Okta Research team's observation, the Omicron surge in the Philippines will only last for a month, similar to other countries. However, the monitoring group warns we should expect doubling of daily COVID-19 infections in the coming days. Some cause for optimism. This is the um, situation in South Africa. We see that there was a, you know, a, a higher than the Delta spike, but it lasted for just one month. So this gives us some optimism that the surge that we're seeing right now may last just one month. It will be over by end of January, effectively. Um, but we, you know, again, this is a, a, an experience of a country, uh, but, you know, this could um, play out like a, a fairly more optimistic scenario. Okta Research Fellow Professor Guido David explains that although hospital admissions are still low because patients only experience mild symptoms, Omicron variant still serves a threat to the unvaccinated population. Many breakthrough infections will also be recorded among those fully vaccinated and those who have not yet received their booster COVID-19 shot. 
Meanwhile, because many have been sick and experiencing flu-like symptoms, there are long queues in COVID-19 testing centers. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III said he has given directive to the Food and Drug Administration for the approval of antigen home testing. However, the health chief said antigen testing are only for symptomatic individuals, people living in area with high infection rate and those exposed to positive individuals. And to uh, make sure that the uh the CPR of the currently available antigen test kits will be revised to include the uh, home uh, conduct, uh, home testing uh, using antigen test kits. No? Because now it's still done uh, mostly uh, uh, officially in a lab setup. Secretary Duque also explained that the government cannot shoulder all the expenses for mass testing. RT-PCR tests cost from 2,450 pesos to 3,360 pesos, depending whether a COVID-19 laboratory is public or private facility. I mean, how I wish we could give this all for free, no? Uh, but uh, mahirap din kasi, it's going to uh, suck a great deal of our very limited resources. Mahal din yan, eh. Did you realize that, for example, if you did 200,000 a day, that's not even 1% of the population. Time is 2,000 mo na lang, 400 million a day. That's uh, 4 billion in 10 days, and that's 12 billion in one month. Testing is just one small uh, component of the broad uh, front uh, uh, interventions. The DOH emphasized RT-PCR or confirmatory tests remain to be the gold standard to detect a COVID-19 positive individual. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. As the Omicron variant continues to surge in different countries, the World Health Organization acknowledges the existence of different studies pointing to the latest variant Omicron to cause less severe illness if compared to earlier variants. Ia de Vera from New Zealand will tell us why live. Uh, yes, Ia, please go ahead. William, a recent study comparing the Omicron variant with both Delta and the original variant shows Omicron was quicker in reaching the upper airways and lungs, but slower in intruding the lung tissue itself. This is one of the findings from a recent study awaiting peer review conducted by a team of researchers in Hong Kong University's Faculty of Medicine. According to the team, the Omicron variant multiplies 70 times faster than Delta and the, and the original SARS-CoV-2 variant after 24 hours of infection, but it replicates less efficiently, more, more than 10 times lower when inside the human lung tissue, thereby causing lesser or milder severity of the disease. According to WHO Incident Manager Abi Mahamud, this could be good news, but more studies are needed to prove it. Furthermore, lead researcher Dr. Michael Chiwai said that severity of the disease in human is not only determined by virus replication, but by the host's immune system as well even if the virus is less infectious. Although the severity of the, of the illness brought by Omicron may be reportedly milder, the pressure it brings to the health staff in many affected countries could still be very significant. More countries such as the United States, Australia, Australia and Canada have adapted to a shorter isolation period as a consequence of more people getting infected to avoid manpower shortages and pressure to many affected industries. William, to date, a dedicated Omicron variant vaccine is yet to be confirmed if necessary. William? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Ia de Vera reporting live from New Zealand. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority reports 60 of its personnel are undergoing quarantine. Meanwhile, the railway sector conducts mass swab testing for its employees. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. Out of 100 MMDA workers, 60 of them tested positive for COVID-19. MMDA General Manager Romando Artez said majority of the COVID-19 infected personnel experience mild symptoms while others are asymptomatic. All of them are fully vaccinated. Right now, po, meron po tayong uh, mga infections. 
In fact, kahapon po, nagpa-swap po tayo ng may mga symptoms. Out of 100, uh, it was reported this morning, yung nagpa-swap kahapon, ay nasa 60 plus po yung wow. positive. The agency also encouraged its fully vaccinated personnel to get booster shots for additional protection amid the Omicron COVID-19 variant threat. Out of the 8,000 MMDA employees, over 600 of them received booster dose. Meanwhile, the railway sector is also ramping up its efforts to protect employees from the virus threat. Mass swab testing is being conducted where 1,700 train employees underwent antigen test. 345 of them had to undergo confirmatory testing where 56 of them tested positive for COVID-19. Magpapatuloy po. Itong testing na ito sa kabuuan po ng linggo hanggat po uh, matest natin ang lahat ng ating mga rail personnel at nang uh, ma-quarantine po natin at uh, mabigyan po ng uh, naayong lunas yun pong mga madedetect po nating positive cases. Despite the number of personnel getting infected, the DOTR assures 70% operational capacity to accommodate passengers. They also assure passengers will not have a direct contact with employees infected with COVID-19. Passengers, meanwhile, are encouraged to use the automated fare collection system or beep cards to avoid physical contact with ticket sellers. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And in other news, a pharma group assures their warehouses have enough stock of medicine supply amid reports of temporary shortage of paracetamol and other drugs. Meanwhile, a group of doctors encourages those who are experiencing flu-like symptoms to isolate themselves and get tested against COVID-19 amid rising cases. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. The Pharmaceutical and Healthcare Association of the Philippines, or PHAP, says there are other alternative drug brands available for flu-like symptoms like paracetamol. This as the group assures that there is no shortage of medicines among its member companies. The alternative is on the brand. What we're seeing mm -hmm. today kasi na nag-out of stock, yung mga kinasanayan na mga brands ng paracetamol, mga analgesic. But There are other brands that are available. Um, siguro dahil biglang surge ng demand dun sa isang butika, nagkakaubusan. But we assure the public na as soon as mag-reorder sa amin yung drugstore, kaagad-agad magde-deliver kami. Despite this, PHAP reminds the public not to hoard and stockpile medicines. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III also says there is enough generic drugs for flu-like symptoms. According to Duque, local pharmaceutical company Unilab Incorporated has vowed to replenish its stocks of branded medicines in drugstores and pharmacies within the week. He will also talk with the Department of Trade and Industry on the status of the supplies. Kasi nga... hindi nila inasahan na biglang sisipa yung demand. So yung uh, tugon sa supply, uh, sa demand pala, by raising supply, eh hindi naman siya immediate. Ano? Na tumaas ang uh, demand, eh magkakaroon ka agad ng uh, production. So humahabol na. The Philippine College of Physicians for its part reminds the public that branded and generic drugs have the same efficacy. The group's president, Dr. Maricar Limpin, advises people to take paracetamol only if they are having fever and to consult a doctor for guidance in proper dosage intake. In general, ano, ang, paracetam ang paracetamol is quite safe. Pag sumobra talaga ay maaaring mag-cause din ng problema. No? Pwede, kasi lahat siyang dadaan yan sa liver. So pwedeng magkaroon ng mga toxicity. So hindi rin talaga namin ina-advise na basta-basta na lang uh, mag-take ng gamot. Pero sa paracetamol, usually, ang advice naman namin dyan ay pinumin yung gamot no, every uh, four hours kung may lagnat. Kung wala naman talagang lagnat, so bakit kailangan uminom ng paracetamol? So hindi kailangan. Many of the symptoms siguro ng mga pasyente ngayon, pwede uh, ang gawin nila, uminom sila ng maraming tubig. May, uh, except doon sa mga tao na may congestive heart failure, yung may mga sakit sa puso. Dr. Limpin is also urging those who are experiencing flu-like symptoms to take the initiative to isolate, consult doctors, and undergo COVID-19 testing. Napakahirap pong ma-differentiate ang flu 
sa COVID. Parehas na parehas po yung simptomas. So, ang pinaka-importante po, magawan po kayo ng test. Uh, hindi po makakasama sa inyo kung i-isolate ninyo kaagad ang sarili. Hindi kailangan hintayin yung test bago mag-isolate. Hindi ninyo kailangan pumunta ng ospital. You can do teleconsult. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group National Capital Region will file a criminal case against a second quarantine skipper who arrived in the country last December 22. Meanwhile, hundreds of cops will man quarantine facilities in Metro Manila starting this week. Leia Ilagan reports why. The Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group National Capital Region is now collecting additional evidences against the returning OFW who skipped her mandatory quarantine in SEDA residences in Makati City. CIDG and CR Chief Police Colonel Randy Glenn Silvio said they are awaiting for the affidavit of the taxi driver who fetched her at the airport. Colonel Silvio adds, they will file a case once they finish the documentation next week. Na-violate niya po yung batas eh. Pag-arrive mo po sa airport, meron po doon pinipirmahan na apidabit sa undertaking na sinasabi mo dapat mag-undergo ka na mandatory quarantine. Yung po ang isang na-violate niya doon. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police confirms the deployment of personnel in quarantine hotels to avoid quarantine protocol violations. The PNP will make sure na gagawin ang trabaho nito na hindi naman nakakambala sa flow of business operation ng mga hotel. Our presence would only mean na may magbabantay to make sure that health protocols are implemented. This can be an effective tool in tracking models such as the absentee quarantine. NCRPO earlier said, they have a team from the local police who are already conducting surprise inspections since Monday. May mga designated police personnel tayo dyan under our local police who will be manning at uh, inspecting the quarantine facilities from time to time. Although hindi natin kayang i-cover lahat, siguro sa dalawang personnel, mga dalawa tatlong uh, facilities ang uh, kanilang i-cover na magkakalapit. Last night, President Rodrigo Duterte orders the PNP to deploy personnel in quarantine hotels following the two incidents of quarantine skippers in Makati. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Apart from Metro Manila, restrictions against individuals who are still unvaccinated against COVID-19 may be implemented in the whole country. Rosa Licoz will tell us why. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases or IATF will discuss tomorrow whether to create a policy or not to restrict the movement of those who willfully refuse vaccination against COVID-19 throughout the country. This following the recommendation of testing SAR and Presidential Advisor for COVID-19 Response, Secretary Vince Dison, to implement the resolution adopted by the Metro Manila Council nationwide, particularly barring unvaccinated individuals in public places and from leaving their homes. The official made a statement during the IATF meeting with President Rodrigo Duterte on Tuesday night. Mr. President, Nag-usap na po kami ni Secretary Anyo, ni Secretary Duque, Secretary Galvez, Secretary Lorenzana na we are recommending that this policy in NCR also be adopted by the entire country. Even in areas po na hindi pa nagsusurge. Dahil alam naman po natin, it is really just a matter of time na itong Omicron ay kumagat na sa buong bansa. The presidential advisor said this policy has been implemented in various countries, particularly in some European countries where Omicron drives record daily COVID cases. Kung titignan po natin ang ibang bansa, countries all over the world are restricting the exposure of the unvaccinated. Sa France po, they are cracking down on unvaccinated. Uh, Germany, they are locking down unvaccinated people. 
And even in South Korea po, they now are imposing a new vaccine passes. No, para po ano, no, uh, restrict yung movement ng mga unvaccinated. Currently, the Philippines has already fully vaccinated 65.63% of its target population, while 79.42% have received at least one dose. Meanwhile, the Regional Task Force Against COVID-19 in Calabarzon released a memorandum for all its provincial and local task forces to adopt the resolution of the Metro Manila Council restricting the mobility of unvaccinated individuals. Rosalie Coz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the national government plans to conduct a nationwide vaccination day exclusively for senior citizens. JP Nunez reports why. 2.5 million senior citizens out of the 8.2 million have yet to receive their COVID-19 vaccine shot. Vaccine SAR Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. explains it was still quite challenging because some of the senior citizens hesitate to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Secretary Galvez says booster rollout for senior citizens was slow. Ang isang malaking challenge pa rin po natin ay uh, ma-address po natin yung tinatawag nating unwillingness of others to get vaccinated and get their boosters. Kasi po yung iba, pagka nakanalaman nila na dalawang uh, ano po sila, parang ayaw nila po mag-boosters. Meanwhile, Secretary Francisco Duque III says government plans to execute national vaccination days for senior citizens. The program aims to promote vaccination drive that will encourage unvaccinated senior citizens to get their primary series and those who are due with their booster shot to get their vaccine dose. Uh, we are planning to put up a national vaccination day for uh, the uh, senior citizens and also for those who have completed their primary uh, series, first and second doses, uh, we, we are pushing for uh, a more aggressive uh, booster uh, of said uh, groups. No? The Department of Health emphasizes the importance of COVID-19 vaccines to senior citizens as additional layer of protection. And with the Omicron threat, they should be vaccinated at the soonest possible time. In Metro Manila, a one-day vaccination drive for senior citizens will be conducted tomorrow. This will aim to vaccinate more than 50,000 of the seniors in the National Capital Region who have not yet decided to get COVID-19 vaccine, and around 700,000 of them who are due for their booster dose. Siyempre, yung iba, takot pa din po. No? Takot pa rin sila sa... sa... bakuna. No? Meron pa silang mga agam-agam. Yung iba naman po is ayaw talagang lumabas. No? So, yun nga po, uh, matagal na nating pinapaliwanag no, yung beneficyo ng bakuna at bakit kailangan magpabakuna. Senior citizens will be given priority in vaccination sites to speed up their vaccination process and lessen their exposure. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Local government units in Metro Manila open more vaccination sites for booster shot. Some even allow walk-in residents for the booster dose. Asher Kadapan Jr. reports. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to have lower the severity of the deadly disease in most of the infected individuals. Some local chief executives recognize this reason for low hospitalization utilization despite another surge in COVID-19 cases in the country, particularly in the national capital region. With this, Metro Manila mayors are intensifying the vaccination program, including booster shots, to protect the citizens. Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte, on her part, says that the local government unit is opening more vaccination sites across their jurisdiction. We are intensifying in the next few days because that's our strategy to address Omicron or to address other variants no? because um, I believe that if everyone is fully vaccinated and has um, additional protection from booster shots, that magkaroon man sila ng COVID, uh, hindi magiging masyadong seryoso. 
Manila City Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso also opens vaccination sites where essential sectors are located. A booster shot night has been scheduled to open in Divisoria area tonight to prioritize the vaccination of market vendors and personnel, while a drive through vaccination site dedicated for delivery service drivers will serve during office hours tomorrow. Minabuti namin na magbakuna sa lugar na kung saan kayo naghahanap buhay para hindi na maabala, masayang ang araw ninyo sa pagkita dahil uh, sa hirap ng buhay ngayon. Meanwhile, Pateros Mayor Miguel Ponce prioritizes vaccination of their constituents while booster shots are also being administered to help them against the restrictions implemented against unvaccinated citizens. Yung lahat ng taga Pateros lamang muna na wala pong bakuna pa ay pwede kayong mag-walk in 12 years old and above doon po sa ating AMC gym at dito po sa ating uh, PCS Annex upang tayo po ay mabakunahan na at hindi na tayo dito, hindi na tayo pumasok dito sa mga restrictions. The Caloacan City Government likewise opens their vaccination site for booster shot to walk-in citizens even if they are residents from another LGU. They are only being required to bring with them their vaccination card and a valid identification. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Several presidential aspirants are now focusing on issues concerning the rising COVID-19 cases in the country. The aspirants presented their platforms to resolve the current health crisis. Nel Maribuhok will tell us why. Presidential aspirant Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. and Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio call on the government to immediately establish a tax helpline to rescue homeless street children. According to Marcos, it is important to rescue the street kids because they are the ones who are more susceptible to the disease, especially since it is feared that the Omicron variant could infect and spread faster than other variants. Marcos said the project is designed to encourage concerned citizens to inform appropriate authorities on the presence of children that need rescuing. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Lacson will push for the aggressive measures against COVID-19. In a statement, he said the government should implement aggressive mass testing, mass contact tracing, and mass booster shots, vaccination of minors, and tougher stance against violators. The senator also welcomed the move of other camps to halt their political gatherings and public activities amid rising COVID-19 infections in the country. On her FB post, the Vice President Lenny Robredo calls for volunteer medical professionals and non-medical support personnel to be part of the Bayanihan e-consulta, the telemedicine response of her office on the COVID-19 pandemic. In another post, she announced that the OVP's swab cab operations will be at Quezon City Circle tomorrow, January 6. Those interested to avail the free antigen swab test need to be pre-registered. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno Domagoso will temporarily stop his campaign tour around the country to focus on saving people's lives first. Naya mo na yung kampanya, yung politika sa kanila na yan. Regalo ko na sa kanila yan. Okay na ako dito. Focus lang tayo. Mabuhay ang tao. Mabuhay ang tao. Panatag ang tao. Maramdaman ang tao na may gobyerno. Ayun, masaya na ako doon. Ano naman yan eh? Destiny ang pati. Moreno said he wanted to prioritize addressing the rising COVID-19 infections, especially when Manila records an increase of cases from only around 70 to 90 cases before the holiday season to 990 on Tuesday. Senator Manny Pacquiao also has no reported activity today, but in a news release, he said that to ensure transparency and accountability under his administration, he would require all government officials to waive their right under the bank's secrecy law, including immediate members of their family. Apart from signing the waiver, Pacquiao said that he would also allow publication of the statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth of all government officials except the details that may be deemed as a breach of their privacy and personal data. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
The Commission on Elections has yet to resolve the petition seeking to reopen the period for filing certificates of candidacy in the 2022 elections. Dante Amento will give us the details live. Yes, Dante, go ahead. Good evening, Marielle. Comelec spokesperson Director James Jimenez said the Bank deferred the resolution of the petition urging the poll body to reopen the Certificates of Candidacy or COCs filing in the May 9, 2022 elections. Jimenez added the matter is expected to be resolved by next week. All points raised in the petition are also being square, squarely addressed. The petition was filed by PDP Laban Kosi Wing last December 31, 2021. The ruling party has no candidate for president and vice president for the 2022 polls. Meanwhile, Jimenez also disclosed the Comelec is aware of groups who will try to intervene and make excuses to postpone the elections. In fact, a petition to postpone the 2022 national and local elections was filed by the National Coalition for Life and Democracy last December 10, 2021. But Jimenez stressed there is no reason to postpone the elections. Petitions to postpone the polls will not succeed, Jimenez assures. The Philippine Constitution also requires the conduct of elections. Because if you want to postpone the elections, then what you're really wanting to do is to ignore the Constitution. How can you ignore the Constitution? Diba? All, all government authority basically emanates from the Constitution. And if you're saying that the Constitution should be ignored simply because you want to stay in power, then, then you have a big, big problem. Comelec recently clarified it will not matter whether there will be a large number of voters during the elections. What is necessary is for voters will freely exercise their right of suffrage. And even if only one voter will cast his vote, the elections will still push through. And that's our latest live from Quezon City. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Dante Amento reporting live from Quezon City. The Hong Kong government has banned flights from eight countries, including the Philippines, amid fears of a fifth wave of infections with surging Omicron cases. In a virtual briefing, Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam said flights from the Philippines, Australia, Canada, France, India, Pakistan, the United Kingdom and the United States will not be allowed from January 8 to 21. Lam noted that most of Hong Kong's imported cases come from these countries. The official is hoping the measure could drastically cut down imported cases. The Department of Education has yet to decide whether or not to continue the limited face-to-face -face classes amid the ongoing surge of COVID-19 cases in the country. Janice Ingente reports why. The Department of Education is preparing the final assessment for the pilot implementation of the limited face-to-face -face classes, which began last November 15, 2021. According to DepEd Secretary Leonor Briones, the result of the assessment will determine whether they should continue with the in-person mode of learning. Secretary Briones noted they will also need the Health Department's risk assessment for January 15. Ang mangyari yan, ang final uh, listing will really be uh, influenced largely by the risk assessment of the Department of Health. By January 15, yun ang request nila. Hintayin ang assessment sa January 15 because uh, uh, things might, uh, uh, it seems nothing, um, the picture is as improving and, and people are already taking uh, precautions and the picture will change uh, most likely. <laughs> Aside from this, DepEd will also consider the decision of local government units if they will still allow physical classes in their areas. In Metro Manila, Bulacan, and Rizal, limited face-to-face -face classes has been suspended after the said areas was subjected to Alert Level 3 due to sudden increase of COVID-19 cases. This is contingent pa rin no, dun sa sustainability ng no, current sa mga FGUs. So, and of course, the parents' consent. So, hindi natin alam, but because of the Omicron, uh, there might be some local government units of the areas where our pilot classes are already implementing, no? uh, 
baka, baka i-defer din muna nila. Deped said they are still assessing which areas are considered as low risk for COVID-19 can hold limited face-to-face -face classes. Although face-to-face -face classes are suspended in Metro Manila, pilot schools resumed their physical classes on Monday in areas under alert levels 1 and 2. Yung nasa pilot phase na nag-umpisa na dati, uh, yung mga paaralan doon na wala sa... Uh, sa alert level 3 uh, and up at nananatiling uh, nasa alert levels 1 and 2 ay even as we speak ay nagpapatuloy yung kanilang face-to-face uh, -face classes only for the uh, pilot schools that are already existing. A total of 287 public and private schools have completed pilot in-person classes which has ended last month. While DepEd and DOH is expected to announce the plans and adjustment for the expansion of limited face-to-face -face classes by January 15. Janice and Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. United States President Joe Biden urges concern but not alarm as Omicron cases rises in the country. Maeve Yandog will tell us why live. Uh, yes, Maeve. Uh, good evening. Go ahead. William, the daily reported COVID-19 cases in the U.S. have more than tripled over the past two weeks, reaching a record-breaking average of 480,000 and with Omicron accounting for 95% of the new infections. In a meeting with the members of the White House COVID-19 response team, Mr. Biden emphasized the importance of getting vaccinated, including newly eligible teenagers ages 12 to 15, and to get the booster shots for maximum protection. Still get COVID, but it's highly unlikely, very unlikely that you become seriously ill. And we're seeing COVID-19 cases among vaccinated in workplaces across America, including here at the White House. But if you're vaccinated and boosted, you are highly protected. You know, be concerned about Omicron, but don't be alarmed. Mr. Biden also addressed the nationwide shortages of tests that is driven not just by Omicron, but also by people traveling during the holidays and upon returning to school. Many states and local governments and health care providers are passing out free at-home tests that you can pick up. Just find out where they are. And finally, as I announced recently, the federal government is launching a website this month where you can get tests shipped to your home for free upon your request. Furthermore, Mr. Biden announced that U.S. is doubling its order for the antiviral pill by Pfizer to 20 million courses and is looking for the supply to ramp up over the coming months. Meanwhile, experts such as Dr. Anthony Fauci believes that COVID-19 hospital admissions is much more relevant to focus on rather than the total number of cases. Hospital admissions in the U.S. averaged 14,800 per day last week, but still short compared to the 16,500 per day a year ago when majority of the U.S. was unvaccinated. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Maybe a dog reporting live from Australia. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC in the United States, recommended shortening the time period between the second dose of vaccine and Pfizer COVID booster to five months. Recipients of Moderna vaccine, on the other hand, must wait at least six months for their third dose. The agency has also recommended a third dose of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine to immunocompromised children ages 5 to 11, 28 days after receiving the second dose. Pfizer research and experimental data demonstrate that uh, the booster effect can effectively prevent symptomatic infections by up to 70 percent. Meanwhile, the United States has reported more than 1 million new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours, while the CDC reports 71.6 million people have already received booster shot in the United States. Meanwhile, Vietnam has proposed to spend 15.25 billion U.S. dollars in the next two years to revive the country's COVID-19 hit economy. Jose Dito Liquido will give us the details live. Uh, 
yes, uh, Jose Dito, go ahead. Good evening, William. Minister of Planning and Investment Nguyen Chi Dung announced on Tuesday that the proposed package will include a fiscal policy package of 291 trillion Vietnamese dong. This will cover government bond insurance, the laying of deadlines in taxes and fees for businesses, and support for worker rent. The stimulus package will also include 46 trillion Vietnamese dong worth of monetary policy to reduce bank loan interest rates by around 1%. The government is also planning to spend a further 60 trillion Vietnamese dong towards upgrading the healthcare system and other anti-pandemic expenses. With a package designed to be absorbed quickly, the government is targeting a GDP growth of 6 to 6.5 percent for 2022. William? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Jose Dito Dikido, reporting live. The James Webb Space Telescope, considered to be the most powerful space telescope launched to date, has successfully unfolded its sun shield the size of a tennis court. Marvin Finn will tell us why live. Yes, Marvin, you please go ahead. Maria, the James Webb Telescope on Tuesday unfolded its 70-foot or 21-meter sun shield to protect it from the sun's heat as it travels to its destined orbit in space. Known as one of the most challenging spacecrafts to be deployed by NASA, unfolding the tennis court sunshield in space is an incredible milestone accomplished by the team, according to their project's program director, Gregory Robinson. James Cooper of the Goddard Space Flight Center and Sunshield Manager stated that multiple teams have worked 12-hour shifts within an eight-day process to ensure the completion of the Sunshield structures, cables, and mechanisms. The Sunshield is crucial in allowing Webb to continue its mission in space. Now that the shield is intact, the telescope can overcome up to 75% of the expected failures to disrupt its function that would have otherwise been inflicted by the sun. The telescope is intended by scientists to reportedly look back in time and deeper into the universe in order to study the different phases of cosmic history. Using infrared technology, it is said that the telescope can detect signals from the very first galaxies from more than 13 billion years ago. The sun shield success is only the beginning as the experts breathe for its next steps. NASA now prepares to unfold the telescope's 21-foot gold-coated mirror later this week. Marielle? Thank you, Marv Delphine, reporting live from Australia. And before we close, we will leave you with a word giving glory to God from the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 28. It says, Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. And those are the reasons behind the news January 5, 2022. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Mariella Toza. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.